Go with me to Matthew chapter 17. So I'm just going to hit some things. Now, here's one thing I want to point out. You're going to see a correlation or an overlapping between praying and saying. Right? Yep. There's a time to say and a time to pray. Now, so as you see this overlapping, because you're going to see it, how it's going to apply to both, and I'm going to try to point out some of how it works. But you have to understand, to pray is to say. So if you say correctly normally, then you should be able to pray correctly also. So if you're told how to say, you're also being told how to pray. Now, so praying and saying is related, but they're not always the same. But you can't switch. When you go into praying, you can't switch from how you normally say. Does that make sense? You'll see more as we go. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Now, I'm not going to read all the scriptures here because it's way too long. But you know, this is the case where the man brought his son to Jesus to cast out a devil, right? And the disciples tried and couldn't do it. Now, in Matthew 7, 17, verse 20, and Jesus said, and, well, later they came to him, remember? And they said, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we cast this spirit out? Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. End of story right there. Because of your unbelief. Now, see, some people like to jump ahead to the scripture that isn't even there in the Greek that says this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. It's not there, okay? It was added in. That's why it's in italics if it's in anything in your Bible. Many of the more modern translations don't even have it in there at all. And so you have to realize that what he gave the answer, and the answer is not about prayer and fasting. The answer was unbelief, right? Is lack of faith. So he said, for verily I say unto you, now watch this, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now notice right there, with faith, nothing is impossible. You got that? So that overrides everything else that goes on. So your faith can push things through, right? And you can get that by saying. But now notice, your faith also has to be applied in praying, right? Now, Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Again, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also, if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Right. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Right. Now, is that, it, now, that sounds like a blank check to me. Yeah. Okay. Now, the only qualifying there is that it has to be according to God's will. Isn't that right? Yeah. But it's a blank check. In other words, once you know God's will, now you got a blank check. As if, and if you can word it and say it in a way that lines up with God's will, and it's according to his will, then you can know that when you pray it, you're going to have it. Amen? You're going to get it. Now, now, get this. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So again, if you can believe, what does that mean? If you have faith, all things are possible. Is that right? Yeah. So remember, these are overlying principles that apply to everything. Listen, you can, okay, now I'm not talking about praying right now. I'm talking about saying. You can say things that aren't God's will and still get them. Do you get that? Why? Because you have faith in God that he will give it to you. But the problem is you don't know his will. And you think you've been taught his will is something else. And if you believe something else is his will, then you can pray that and have faith in that and you'll get it. Okay, let me give you an example. The children of Israel wanted a king. And it wasn't God's will. But they got a king. Isn't that right? Now, now so you have to understand, you need to watch what you say, right? Because you can't talk one way and then go to prayer and talk another way or go to prayer and talk in faith when the rest of your time is spent in doubt, right? 
And if that happens, your doubt muscle is going to be much stronger than your faith muscle. All right? If you ever notice, I've had people ask me, how come, uh, man, I can, I'll have to confess something positive for months, but I can say one negative thing and it hits. Why? Because you've been trained to doubt. Yep. You say, well, I, I, nobody's set me down and said, here, let me teach you how to doubt. <laughs> they didn't have to do that. They nope. programmed it into you yep. over all of the television that you've watched, okay? <laughs> over all of the, well, you know, a lot of the preaching probably you've heard, okay? And so you've been trained, so you're, get this, your faith in doubt is stronger than your faith in faith. Stronger than your faith in God. Does this make sense? 